Good morning. It's 8 July 2022. It's 9 a.m. in the morning. We just drove from Lake Louise to Kootenai National Park and today we're going on a two-night, three-day trip entering Mount Assiniboine from Kootenai National Park. Mount Assiniboine is a provincial park in BC and there's multiple ways to enter it. Uh, we have done this uh, trail as a part of our GDT journey, uh, session C, but this time we are entering it from, uh, we are entering it to the core area from a trail which is not well traveled. So this trail is called Surprise Creek uh, Trail and it uh, traverses uh, about 12 kilometers before you reach the first campsite which is the Surprise Creek Cabin and then after the Surprise Creek Cabin you have to go up about 10 to 12 kilometers to Rock Lake which will take you up to Alpine and then from Rock Lake you go over Faro Pass entering um, the core area of Mount Assiniboine where all the hustle bustle is. So we're actually not going to be entering the core area but we're going to be going over the Faro Pass and overseeing the Mount Assiniboine. But today we have a long day so that's why we're starting a bit early. It's about 24 kilometers uh, should be the day today and uh, we're just going to Rock Lake in Alpine and camp there for tonight. All right folks this is KP. There is Melody, she's getting her gators ready from Campy Hikes. See you on the trail. You know, Melody is such a morning person. You can see right on her face, I mean, how much she loves the morning. Versus me, I'm fairly opposite. I don't, I don't really love mornings. I'm kidding. I actually love mornings and she hates them. I mean, I know it's not too early. I woke up today at 3 a.m. I don't know if it was an excitement or I was just not able to sleep, but uh, definitely woke up at 3 a.m. Since then, I was just twisting, turning, trying to sleep. Didn't fall asleep. So finally decided I'm gonna head down about at 4.15, I think I was down in the living room and then making coffee and just starting my breakfast and you know getting the day going but uh, so far I'm feeling great I had a good breakfast I usually don't eat breakfast so for me to have a breakfast that gives me a lot of energy huh yeah same as yours and then I made one for her I know I'm the great husband um, and then currently my bag is just over 40 pounds is what I'm carrying and the reason is, you know, her hip is is not that great. She's still trying to get used to all the hiking. So I don't want to put too much weight on on her body while she, wa while she walks, you know. And today is gonna be a long day. We used to do longer days, but with her hip issue, we have shortened the day, so. But today is still gonna be the longest day and a lot of elevation. So that's why I'm carrying all the weight, the food, the tent, so, all of it, pretty much. But I guess it, uh, I like it. So, no complaints other than my shoulder pinches, though. And that's the other thing I was going to ask you folks. If someone has a trick, I don't know what it is. And I try to do a bunch of different things, but it does not work. For some reason, right here, when the pressure goes from this back, my shoulder starts pinching, and then it becomes very uncomfortable to carry the load. So, if you guys have a trick message me you know put that in the comment hopefully you'll help me out so folks this is the trail going towards rock lake and then after rock lake is Faro pass uh, entering the core area of mount assiniboine where lake mccog and and nub peak and and uh, all that stuff is but uh, just wanted to show you folks here so the trail well here it's rocky so uh, you know it's, it's easy to find but uh, in few areas it's quite overgrown. That's where we came from. So you can see these neon orange looking things. Uh, so those are really helpful. Markers? And, uh, yeah, neon uh, markers. And these are really, really helpful. Not just in winter, but also in summer because they're easy to find so you know what your destination is and you pretty much then can find the trail. We're just taking a snack break. I believe we have about five kilometers to go to uh, Rock Lake Campground. Just found an ice creek here and it's a nice area to sit and it stopped raining so it's 
Melody trying to get her shoes going. A lot of burnt trees. It's still gorgeous though. So we just reached the junction for Faro Pass and Rock Lake. So we'll head down that way to get to the lake. And then we'll come up here, go to Faro Pass. Tomorrow. Okay, so we just came from that side. And we've just reached the campground. So they've got the tent pads with the rocks. Brand new outhouse. The clear roof, which is nice. That's the second tent pad. And the third. Looks like a gorgeous area. Yeah. There's a bear bin. Only two bear bins for four sites. It's nice it has the grey water disposal. Looks like it might not have a lock on the door. It also looks like there's a porcupine been chewing at it. There's the designated fire pit. Nice location. I think there's only three sites. Because there's only two bear bins. It's odd. Normally they put one extra, not one less. And then the grey water is right beside. Okay, well, we're going to get set up. See you later. So this is where our tent is set up for the night. It's close to the lake. It's a gorgeous view. Still a bit of snow over there that hasn't melted yet. Lots of mist at the top. The fire pit area over there. And there's two bear bins. A broken toilet with a pair of marmots living underneath that are chewing as we speak. But otherwise, pretty good. Finally we see some blue skies, boy it's been raining pretty much uh, non-stop but we kept the fire rolling so which, which kept us warm. It's definitely gorgeous here though. It gets so quiet when it's getting close to sleep time. We just wanted to come and see the reflection here at the rock lake. Look at this folks, beautiful. Zoom in, there are the reflections. Absolutely gorgeous. And just that mist looks beautiful. Blue sky on this side. Good morning. It's 6 a.m. Saturday morning today. Day two. Just going to show you guys the views right outside our tent here. Just at Rock Lake. Look at that sunrise. Gorgeous. All right, so we are heading up to Ferro Pass right now and we have encountered some snow on the way. Uh, we should be very close though, because um, it's about 2200 meters on the map it said. So we are just going to reach the 2200 mark, so we should be close. Uh, nothing too bad, the snow is a bit soft, uh, but I'm glad that uh, it's not covered in snow, so we're not post-holing. But it's refreshing on the feet.
All right, folks. See you at the pass. Those are fresh from today. Way down there is Rock Lake where we just came from. You can sort of see it there. And we're just reaching Faro Pass. This is our lunch spot. There's the Wedgwood Lake. Just covering clouds right there is the Wedgwood Peak. Now which one is the other ones? Which is the one beside it? Marshall, Marshall right there. And then down here is where the lake is. Wedgwood Lake. Move along. Hey, bear. Go. Hey, bear. My God, that was such a close encounter. Boy, he walked right into our campsite. So it's day three right now. It's time for us to head home. We just, just got the fire going this morning. Just have to put some wood in there. Um, Melody has caught some fever um, and cold, so she had a hell of a time last night, so hopefully we'll make it home. We have about 20k to kill. So we are packed and ready to head out for today. It's 10 a.m. and we are heading towards uh, our car, so we have about uh, 20 kilometers to go. We're just gonna, our first stop is gonna be Simpson River Campground and we're gonna enjoy our lunch there and then we continue the rest of the way. All right, folks, see you on the trail. So we were just finished our lunch and just about at 2 p.m. we were leaving the Surprise Creek campground area where we stopped for lunch and we were about I would say like maybe a kilometer in on the trail and we ran into a, a big black bear right on the trail just about 50 meters away from us um he did run away though we made a ton of noise we had to um, get the bear horn out so that scared him and then he ran away on the opposite side and went up oh boy that was two bears on the same trip that clearly shows that this trail is is very less travel especially right after the surprise creek going up to rock lake because the trail was very much overgrown and the campground seemed like hardly used. Um, so, you know, that's why the wildlife is, is more frequent in these areas. All right, folks, I'm gonna get back to our car. We have about 12K to go. All right, see you later. <laughs> 